Before we get started, I want to share with you something God just revealed to me. Being that we are talking about the face of God, and I've actually finished the video already, but he just showed me something else. And I knew that I had to add this and make it first. It's about the grace and truth going forward to see the face of God. Enoch in Genesis was taken up with God, but he was not God, but he walked with him. The name Enoch means inaugurated and trained. We must be trained in the faith, working on it, practicing it, truly going after God's heart, and he will show you himself. The name Elisha and the name Elijah comes in in 2 Kings, where there's a chariot of fire that was seen and Elijah was taken up in it. Elijah name means Yah is God. Yahweh is God. Elijah with the SH name means God is salvation. Keep that in mind as we read. The devil wants to be like the Most High. He's a copycat. He's a fraud. And we're going to give him a real good beating today. There's plenty of darkness in the world. And that's because there's plenty of darkness in the people of the world. So I want you guys to get an understanding of who the true and living God is. And we're going to allow scripture to describe him. I want you to get your Bibles. I'm going to want you to follow along. It will make this even more powerful for you if you do so. We're going to start with the book of John, chapter 1. And we're going to begin reading from verse 1. John is who bears witness of the light. And you're going to understand what I mean as you read along with me. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehends it not. Verse 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness 
of the light that all men through him might believe he was not that light speaking of John who bear witness but was sent to bear witness of that light that was the true light which lights every man that comes into the world This is how we know God is able to never leave nor forsake us. Every man that comes into this world has the light. Let's continue. Now we're on verse 10. He, speaking of Jesus, was in the world. And the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spoke. He that comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So in this passage of scripture, what we see is that Jesus is the light. He's the light that comes into every man that comes into this world. And we also see that those who believe on his name are considered to be the sons of God. This is the exact opposite of what the world teaches today. The world teaches arm, leg, leg, arm head the world teaches that every man is God Egyptian talk says we all are gods nothing is further from the truth we're gonna give evil a real good beating today because there's a light that separates from the darkness. So if in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God, then we must go to the beginning of the book to see what that tells us. So we're gonna go all the way to Genesis 1, chapter 1, starting at verse 1. Let's see. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit 
of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Now, in verse 3, we have proof here that the light, which is the light of the world, which is Jesus Christ, came before the sun and moon were created. I repeat, the light of the world, which is Jesus Christ, came before the sun and the moon were created. When we go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, we see that those lights didn't come until the third day. Verse 14, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and God saw it was good. So there's a couple things that I want to highlight here in that scripture that I just read starting at verse 14. If you notice that the light has an S at the end of it. These are lights with an S. This is not the light. These are lights. The devil wants to be like the Most High. We see that the Bible tells us that to worship the sun, S-U-N, is an abomination. While the world would tell you that the sun, S-U-N, is symbolic of S-O-N, the sun, the only begotten. Nothing is further from the truth. Because Jesus came and did works before the sun or the greater light, which rules over the day, was created. And the lesser light, which is the moon, which rules over the night. If you look at different symbols of deities that are created, that are fake, that are not real, they have semblance of stars around them. They have semblance of moons around them. They talk about planets having many moons around them. These are all false doctrines. These are all creations of people who are of darkness. People misuse scripture all the time and it goes all the way up to the top to popes 
and they're so blasphemous that they have crucifixes there's a difference between a crucifix and a cross a crucifix has a decrepit bent up cross with a figurine on it that is supposed to symbolize Jesus as he died on the cross this is nothing more than a celebration of his death it's like the day of the dead they're celebrating death but not that he rose again and the reason that they're celebrating his death and they're showing their flag it's like a flag that you put on the moon to say that you went to the moon even though nobody's been on the moon it's their flag it's their stamp because they say that they are the vicar of Christ so they're showing that they killed Christ and that they're taking his place that's a crucifix big difference between a crucifix and a cross I hope you guys understand the difference between the light which is in every man when they come into the world and the lights that are in the firmament so this is why Jesus can say with confidence that he is the Alpha and Omega and that before Noah he is or in his words I am there's a big big difference when you allow scripture to describe scripture before I go forward there's a lot of people who manipulate scripture they may even be on your social medias what they don't realize is they are the new pastors they have a congregation and they speak to them on a day-to-day -day basis but what they don't realize is they are a pastor Troy they are leaders of the wicked church let's go forward because we want to talk about the land of pineal and what is that about I know you've seen and heard about the pineal gland what the world does is they try to activate the pineal gland through various different practices generated from darkness by dark people utilizing chemicals drugs to activate but they get a distorted vision when they do so when they're looking for the face of God I understand that we all have a yearning to be connected with our creator but there's a right way of doing things the right way is seeking the kingdom first the kingdom of God the wrong way is taking DMT the wrong way is holding on to chess pieces that look like say a mother Mary holding on to your rosary beads and smoking ayahuasca with some supposed leader who's breaking you down making you cry just so that you can humble yourself again the devil wants to be like the most high us followers we don't humble ourselves through somebody beating us down and 
putting us into a state of vulnerability so that we can accept whatever it is they're offering. We come directly to the Father, boldly to the throne, and we come as we are. We repent. We ask to be saved. We get baptized in water. And we ask for the Holy Ghost to come upon us. There's only one right way of doing things. Just as there's only one true and living God. Let's go forward to Matthew 6. I want you to continue to follow me. Because the world is going to give you evil. While this word, which was God, which is God, which was with God, this word will show you the way. What I want to do is, I want to start with chapter 6. I want to start with chapter 6 and verse 20. Read along with me. And if you see, these are the words of Jesus. They are written in red. Verse 20. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust does corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. Let me stop here. The evil will tell you that there's an all-seeing eye. The evil will tell you that there's a third eye. The way God created it is a pineal gland. Jacob spoke in Genesis 32 that he saw the face of God and he called it the land of pineal. We're not activating through dark and occult practices. That's what the devil does. He's trying to be like the Most High. He tries to take things of the Bible and make it his. People that practice these things, they deny Jesus Christ as Lord. It's not an anti-God society, it's an anti-Christ society. And this is where people are confused. With the rest of this scripture, you're going to get an understanding of what the pineal gland is. This is the light that is within. This is the light that we meditate upon, utilizing the word day and night. This is how we get to see the face of God. If you want a clear signal to the face of God, you must abide by his laws and his statutes. And one of those is to meditate on my word day and night. So 
So we're going to start back at verse 22 and we're going to read forward. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, the whole body shall be full of light. But, here comes your separation. But, if thine eye be evil, the whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters. So you're either for good or you are for evil. I'll repeat. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate one and love the other. Or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. And God knows our hearts. He's a judger of them. And he knows those who hate evil. And I thank God for his system. Verse 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them, and ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubic unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or, What shall we drink? Or, Wherewithal shall we be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. And I want to go further with this. People will always take shots at the greatest. The number one will always get everybody's best shot to try to take him off his throne. So the next time you hear somebody talk bad and they say that religion is no good. And then when they have their supporting argument to define why they say that and they use the Bible as their reference point, they're going at the only one that matters. No one talks about Hindu religions when they talk about why they don't do religion. No one talks about Islam when they 
begin to talk bad about religion. They tend to always use the Bible and whatever the darkness inside of them utilizes to manipulate a scripture with. They run to that. I see it so often. It's commonplace and I'm sure that you guys have seen it as well. Whenever somebody talks bad on religion, they automatically go to the Bible and their misunderstanding about what this Bible is all about. And they preach it so loud to their congregation as wicked pastors leading a wicked church. Let's go to Matthew chapter 3. No, I'm sorry. You know what? Let's do Luke chapter 11. And we're going to start at verse 33. Because we want to back that up. We want to confirm what we just read. Matthew chapter 6 verse 22 through 34. At Luke chapter 11, verse 33, we see more reference of what Jesus speaks of about the pineal gland. Verse 33, no man, when he has lighted a candle, puts it in a secret place, neither under a bushel, but on a candlestick that they which come in might see the light. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, with thine eye is single. The whole body also is full of light. But when thine eye is evil, thy body is also full of darkness. Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in thee be not darkness. If thy whole body, therefore, be full of light, having no part dark, the whole shall be full of light. And when the bright shines of a candle does give thee light. Again, Jesus is speaking of the single eye, the pineal gland, so that you can see the face of God. Not taking DMT so that you see reptilians, toads, all these mushrooms and such that people take. They're hallucinating. They have a distorted vision. They're not seeing the true and living God. I can't stress it enough. So now let's go to Matthew chapter 3. And we're going to read some more about this topic here. In Matthew chapter 3, we find out that Jesus was baptized. And why was he baptized? And what happened once he came up out of the water? So we're going to start at verse 11. And we're going to go forward. Matthew chapter 3 verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. 
But he that comes after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into a garner but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire then comes Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John the Baptist to be baptized but John forbade him saying talking to Jesus I need to be baptized of thee and come thou to me and Jesus answered him saying suffer it to be so now or allow it that you baptize me now for thus it becomes us to fulfill all righteousness just as Jesus died on the cross took all of our sins went down to hell and was raised up again he also had to get baptized of water and have the Holy Ghost come upon him just as we do so that all righteousness can be fulfilled these are the walks of our life now you must repent you must get baptized you must ask to be saved and you must ask for the gift of the Holy Ghost starting at verse 16 now and Jesus when he was baptized went up straightway out of the water and lo the heavens were opened unto him and he saw the Spirit of God the face of God descending like a dove it wasn't a dove it was like a dove it was not in the shape of a bird it was just above descending upon him like a dove and lighting upon him and lo a voice from heaven saying this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased so I'm going to conclude this video with this no man can run from his duty on this earth your duty is not to be a philanthropist although that comes with the territory it's not enough to get you over the hump you must repent you must be delivered you must get baptized you must ask for the gift of the Holy Ghost purify yourself with your will first and then the Holy Ghost will take over from that point but if your heart is not willing then you are denying God if you are denying Christ then Christ will deny you in front of the Father salvation is your responsibility every man is responsible for their own salvation and I make this video because I love you and I want you to make it I want you to have eternal life And a lot of you that listen to me have a lot of influence. So the time is now on you. We never know how much time we have on this earth. But one thing we know is it's a short amount of time in regard to eternity. So if you will, pray this prayer with me. Father, I am seeking you, and I am seeking you because I want you to be a part of my life. 
I apologize for the wrongs that I have done, the disrespect that I've given you. I want to understand more about you. So I am willing to allow you to come into my life in a way that you never have before. And I ask that you accept me as I am right now. Guide me to a place so that I can be baptized. And I ask for the Holy Ghost to come upon me, Father. I see that Jesus has done this. And I want to follow in his footsteps. As I begin to walk for you and take the righteous path. In Jesus' name. If you like this video, like and subscribe. I'm going to have some more important videos coming. Peace.